Cheap, fake, easy to break. That's how I used to be here. Take it. Now I'm awake. I'll tell you what I see. Plastic don't shine. Glitter don't shine. Rhinestones don't shine the way you do. You are so real. You are so rare. I see you there. I see
So the purpose of the Out Montclair Union Congregational Church Pride Choir is to provide a safe space for the LGBTQ plus community to gather, be celebrated, and make music together. Instilled with a culture of diversity, inclusion, and inclusion, the Pride Choir fosters acceptance across the, gay, the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and non-binary spectrum and entertains audiences with inspiring musical performances. So let's please give another round of applause to the Out Montclair Union Congregational Church Pride Choir. Oh, and there's another concert on June 2nd. June 6th, I'm sorry. June 6th at Out Montclair. <laughs> So before we begin the program, we'd also like to dedicate a moment of silence to honor former U.S. Representative for New Jersey's 10th Congressional District, Donald Payne Jr., uh, who passed away just last month. Representative Payne spoke on this very stage and was a champion for our community. He will always be remembered as a dedicated public servant who poured his heart and soul into serving the state and his district which included his hometown of Newark. May he rust in power. Let us all please take a moment of remembrance at this time. Thank you. So welcome everyone. My name is Jasmine Wong and I'm a second generation Chinese American proud resident of neighboring Bloomfield and the co-chair of this year's Lantern Festival for Justice and Remembrance. <laughs> we are so thankful to everyone who is here tonight as we come together to not only remember all of those who have lost their lives or been harmed by violence and injustice, but also to celebrate our collective histories in this country that we call home. Home can be community, home can be belonging, and home can of course be land. And while this may be our home, we must first acknowledge the original inhabitants and stewards of the land upon which we currently stand, the Lenape people, from whom this territory was violently and forcibly taken as part of colonialism. We honor the Lenape and other indigenous caretakers of these lands, the elders who lived here before, and the indigenous today and the generations to come. In this hyper-connected world where we are constant witnesses to the hate and injustice that exists, it can sometimes feel too heavy to bear. War and genocide, racism, bigotry, gender-based violence, even silence now threatens to divide us. But then I'm reminded that we have been here before. Our collective histories teach us that in these moments of despair and divisiveness, the opposite emerges, the yin and the yang, if you will. From these moments then come those seeking to create change. New voices emerge and ignite a fire in those young and old, and new relationships and partnerships are formed to fight and stand in solidarity in whichever form they most align. This event itself was created upon such despair. Four years ago, in the wake of the Atlanta spa shootings, a small group of Asian women and their families came together to put on the very first Lantern Festival for Justice and Remembrance. Initially, the idea might have felt too ambitious, and the planning even a little scrappy, uh, but when the time finally came to gather, boy, did they come together. An estimated 1,500 people showed up to this very first Lantern Festival, all seeking something. <laughs> and it ignited a fire in this group to mobilize and to demand better. From fighting for our history to be taught in our schools through Teach Asian American Stories, to creating more civic engagement, to creating cross-racial coalitions to provide better language access, domestic workers' rights, to and to helping abolish the line, to youth workshops and upstander trainings to face hate head-on, and to events that sim simply bring joy and celebrate our diverse cultures. This is grassroots organizing. This is community, and I didn't even know at the time that this was all happening in my home state. Just last year, I was feeling this aching in my heart and I couldn't pinpoint its cause at first. I was a new mother, my friends and family were all alive and well, but when I looked around, I didn't see my community. And then I walked into Edgemont Park here with my husband and daughter in tow and attended my very first Lantern Festival and my very first AAPI New Jersey event. As we passed each community partner table, we were met with this energy of positivity, of hope, 
What I saw was a diverse collective of people from all backgrounds, all working towards improving the world, no matter how big or small, all doing their part to make an impact somewhere. And I was ignited to be part of it all and welcomed with open arms. And that is again what I he see here again this evening. So as dusk comes upon us and the darkness surrounds us, we light our lanterns not only to remember those killed or harmed by violence and injustice, but to celebrate community, solidarity, and our shared goals of securing justice for all. And we move forward without fear by following in the footsteps of those who came before us. Thank you to all of our community partners and state and local officials who are here tonight. Thank you to all of our volunteers and thank you to everyone who has made a contribution to help support our work. Thank you to our Heritage Month sponsors, Bob's Discount Furniture, the Farbrook School, New York Life's Asian Pacific Circle, and the Wu Family Foundation for making events like this possible. So without further ado, I am excited to welcome our first official speaker of this evening. <laughs> um, our first speaker is New Jersey's 62nd Attorney General, Matthew Plackin. As leader of a department whose work touches nearly every aspect of life in New Jersey, A.G. Platkin has centered building tr public trust in the department's efforts, increasing transparency, rooting our out waste and corruption, and implementing innovative public sh safety strategies. So please welcome Attorney General Matthew Platkin. Thank you so much. Can we give API New Jersey a big round of applause? It, it's such an honor to be here. Obviously, this is a community that, if you don't know, I live here, so this is a place that's very near and dear to me, in part because of what we're seeing tonight, what this organization, which was first AAPI Montclair, now is AAPI New Jersey, and is doing such incredible work advocating for the API community in halls of power in Trenton. And I'm honored to partner with this organization at a time when we need to be standing together against hate and bias of all forms, but particularly against the AAPI community. We live in a state of 9.3 million people, 10% of our state, almost a million people, come from, er, call Asian American heritage their own. And we should be proud of that. And it's an incredibly diverse community, but it's also one that I know for too many people is living in fear right now simply because of who they are, how they look, what language they speak. And so I want you to know as the chief law enforcement officer of this state that we are doing everything we can to keep you safe. And I'm honored to partner with organizations like AAPI New Jersey and leaders from across the state who are standing up and making their voices heard and helping us be more effective in doing that critical mission of keeping you safe. So I want to let you all get back to your program, but I want to thank you, everybody, for being here, and I want to thank AAPI New Jersey for standing up and making the voices of this community heard in halls of power that too often ignored those voices. And as we celebrate AAPI Heritage Month, let us all remember the incredible contributions of this community to our state and to this nation. So thank you all. Enjoy the rest of the evening, and thank you for having me. Thank you, Matthew. Our next speaker is Amal Sinha. Amal Sinha is a nationally recognized civil rights leader who has dedicated his career to advancing racial justice, holding institutions accountable, and promoting and defending rights and liberties. As executive director of the ACLU of New Jersey, Amal guides the organization's innovative integrated advocacy work utilizing litigation, policy, public education, and strategic communications to build a more equi equitable society. So please welcome Amol Sinha. Good evening. Um, thank you so much for having me, and let me echo the sentiments about AAPI New Jersey. Uh, what a wonderful organization filling such a crucial need uh, I can't believe that there hasn't been an Asian American organization 
uh, statewide Asian American organizations such as AAPI New Jersey in this state until now. And I'm so grateful for Amber, uh, Rosalind, and all the other leaders that made this possible. I wanted to talk today about democracy. You know, it's no surprise that we are living in challenging times and that we're experiencing some of the most uh, greatest challenges of our democracy. In the spirit of remembrance, I wanted to bring up our past a little bit as well. As AAPI communities, we know what it's like to be silenced, and we know what it's like to have our humanity ignored. It was in 1923 that the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that people that look like us could not become naturalized citizens, denying us the right to vote and our civic relevance. Indeed, democracy is an AAPI issue. But we don't have to be uniquely impacted or singularly harmed by an issue to be vocal on it. All American issues are AAPI issues. In recent weeks, there have been thousands peacefully speaking out for justice at college campuses across the United States, including here in New Jersey, but they have been violently silenced by militarized police forces attacking them. Regardless of how one feels about the perspective of the protesters, the right to free speech is a crucial American issue, and thus a crucial AAPI issue. There are millions right now speaking up demanding reproductive freedom, but they are being ignored by politicians and courts that seek to erode our most fundamental rights and liberties, allowing people to risk and sometimes lose their lives. So abortion access is an AAPI issue. And there are thousands of immigrants coming to our borders to seek asylum, a legal right, but are being silenced by anti-immigrant forces who don't want to see our communities grow and thrive. Indeed, immigrants' rights are AAPI issues. And right now in New Jersey, lawmakers just passed a law to gut our state's public records law, making it harder for anyone in our state to access public records and to hold our government accountable. And it now sits on the governor's desk waiting for his action, and we must be united in our call that Governor Murphy veto the bill, that he lean into his values and his principles as somebody who cares deeply about democracy and that he veto this bill that is uh, there to erode transparency. We need policies that work for the many, and we're sick of politics that only work for the few. We can't have democracy without transparency, and transparency is an AAPI issue. So politicians may be trying to block transparency right now, but their intentions are incredibly transparent. So please join me and AAPI New Jersey and the ACLU and, and our democracy coalition in rejecting this attempt at evading accountability and shrouding us in secrecy. Speaking up is crucial and amplification is necessary, but perhaps most importantly, we must be united in our voice. Our movements are connected. Whether we're calling for an end to indiscriminate violence overseas, whether we're fighting for abortion access for all, or advancing racial justice, or advocating for government transparency and accountability, it's all a battle for our collective liberation. When one of us speaks, they can try to ignore us. But when all of us speak collectively across identity, regardless of our background, regardless of our lived experience, I dare them to try to silence us. Fighting for democracy isn't just something that we do during elections or when we don't like the person that's sitting in the White House. No, it's necessary to defend and uphold the strength of our democracy at all times. So my wish for all of us today, in honor of the Lantern Festival, is that we follow the lead of so many before us and create a world that our children want to see. And that we speak up that we confront injustice head on, and with our undeniable, powerful collective voice, we stand united and we stand up to injustice across every American and AAPI issue. Thank you so much, really appreciate the time. Thank you. Thank you, Amal.
I'm excited to introduce our next performance, which is from the Vanguard Theatre Company. Based here in Montclair, the heart of Vanguard Theatre Company's mission is to make theatre more inclusive, diverse, and welcoming through their mission of dream, diversity, reciprocity, education, activism, and mentorship. Here to perform Times Are Hard for Dreamers and Letter to My 13-Year-Old Self is Gabby Barreto. Don't think too much 
much of it And darling I'm so sorry that they pick you last Try to say your foreign name and last eyes and long blonde hair and girls that stare but baby know that you'll grow up and grow so tough and charm them right your story I could go back and give her a squeeze myself at 13 and just let her know know that she's beautiful mm -hmm. keep on going with your silly dream Life is prettier than it may seem One day you'll end up on stage Little girls will scream your name The days of tears and failure fears and no one cares will all make sense cause you'll grow up and grow so confident and write your story fall in love a little too thought you'd never do I wish I could go back and give her a squeeze myself at 13 and just let her know know that she's beautiful Ooh. That was beautiful, Gabby. Let's give her another round of applause. And now I'd like to introduce Jafreen Udin, Executive Director of the Asian American Writers Workshop and the first woman to lead the organization since its founding in 1991. With over a decade of experience working in the public sector, she specializes in communications, education, and fundraising. Please welcome Jafreen Udin. I'm much shorter than everybody, bear with me. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm really honored to be here this evening and grateful to the team at AAPI New Jersey for the invitation. Um, I was born and raised right here in Montclair, and I think growing up, I'm not sure I could have ever imagined a gathering like this even possible. So to witness it is just a true honor and, and a real joy. Um, as Jasmine mentioned, I'm the executive director of the Asian American Writers Workshop, a national literary nonprofit dedicated to publishing and amplifying Asian American literary culture. Um, we operate from a radically inclusive ethos that works every day to 
expand the definition of not only who is a writer, but who is Asian American as one of the only national organizations cultivating and curating the next generation of Asian American storytellers, we work every day to mobilize our community of readers and writers to imagine a more just future. We have taught and incubated National Book Award winners, Pulitzer Prize winners, Oprah's Book Club picks, and so many more. We work every day to support writers telling their stories our stories on their own terms, our own terms. And isn't really that at the heart of what it means to have agency, to move beyond stories where we're defined by our oppression and instead be able to embrace narrative plenitude in all of its abundance. When we have agency over our stories, we have agency over the history we wanna create and the ancestors we wish to become. But the real power of having agency is to understand it as an act of community. To have agency is to understand that we are only as strong as our most vulnerable. To have agency is to speak out loudly against all forms of violence, hatred, and bigotry. To have agency is to demand justice and peace for our brothers and sisters across the globe. To have agency is to know that solidarity is not a choice, it's a moral imperative. To have agency is to act. I'm gonna close with a few lines of poetry because that's what we do at the workshop. Um, and I'm gonna read from a short, short excerpt from Palestinian poet Mahmoud Darwish. Don't think when you melt in sorrow like candle tears of who will see you or follow your intuition's light. Think of yourself. Is this all of myself? The poem is always incomplete. The butterflies make it whole. Thank you. Thank you, Jeffrey. Our next speaker is a New Jersey native, son of immigrants, part-time baker, journalist, and Emmy-winning TV host, Buki Alegbade. Buki is the host of PBS's Table for All with Buki Alegbade, where he takes viewers across New Jersey into local restaurants and homes to uncover the stories behind every dish. Please welcome Buki Alegbade. everyone. Uh, thank you so much for having me today. Um, I want to thank AAPI New Jersey for inviting me down here to speak to all of you today. I had the incredible pleasure to interview um, some incredible moms from the organization, Roslyn, Heidi, Bean, Somi, and their incredible kids, Carter, Asher, Sumia, and Benny. And um, it was a great opportunity because uh, I think what our show represents is that uh, at the end of the day, we are no different than anyone else. And um, funny enough, they asked me to share a moment of bias or injustice that I faced in my life. Um, but I have a weird situation uh, with my um, relationship to bias. Um, I've never really had... Um, a racist experience, uh, to sort of say. Uh, I grew up within two worlds. I grew up in the Nigerian world, and then I grew up in the white world. I went to predominantly white schools and predominantly white neighborhoods, including uh, Montclair, which is way different than what it was uh, here today. So I never believed that racism existed. I thought it was a weird part of our history and that it ended. Fast forward to when I was growing up, and here we are, and uh, it weirdly meant something else as well. I heard a lot of prejudice within our race. I heard a lot of black Americans versus African Americans. I heard a lot of Jewish against Asian. And the real impetus for this show really started with a good friend of mine uh, named Tim Choi. Tim Choi is Asian American and we met when we were itty bitty assistants at ABC. And one day, me and Tim got to chatting and we realized that we are pretty much grew up exactly the same way. We grew up on education first, respecting your elders. Um, even the way we were disciplined was very much Freaky Friday, the same thing. So what, am I what I'm getting at is, is that 
it's going to take all of us. Um, I know there's a lot that happens within our own uh, minority groups from colorism to classism and all of that. However, um, I can't do it alone. You can't do it alone. We all have something to contribute and something to say. Um, and I think at the end of the day, that is what binds us all together. That is what makes us all who we are. Um, at the end of the day, it's, do you hear me? Do you see me? Um, I think that's what our show is all about. We travel around this great uh, tri-state area talking to so many cultures and so many people. And at the end of the day, a lot of people ask me, how, how did I do? How was that? Because they want to be seen and they want to be heard. And I feel like that is the reason why we're all here today, to hear the stories, to see who we are um, as people, and to celebrate that. So I want to thank AAPI New Jersey for inviting me down. They didn't have to invite my little chocolate self down here. Um, but they, w they extended the olive branch because they know firsthand that it's not just going to take the AAPI community, it's not just going to take the black community, it's not going to take just the Jewish community, it's going to take us all to eradicate the enemy. And the enemy is not a group, it's not a political affiliation, it's not a race. It's hate, it's intolerance, and in especially it's indifference. So thank you AAPI for having me. Thank you all for being a part of this incredible celebration of culture and who we are. And uh, I can't wait to see all these lanterns. Thank you. Thank you, Buki. We'd like to recognize some other dignitaries who are here tonight and to stand against hate with us. Congresswoman Cheryl, who has been here for every Lantern Festival since our first one in 2021. Senator John McKeon, who represents District 27 in the State House. Members of Montclair's Board of Education and outgoing and incoming town council, as well as local Board of Ed and Municipal office officials from Livingston, Ridgewood, Fort Lee, and beyond. Members of New Jersey's AAPI Commission. Montclair Mayor-elect Renee Baskerville. And finally, we are excited to celebrate our final speaker this evening. She is no stranger to this stage and to this town. And on Tuesday, she made history by becoming Montclair's very first Asian American elected official in its 156 year history. So please welcome Montclair's new counselor at large, Susan Shin Anderson. Recently, I was thinking back to March 2021 when AAPI Montclair was started by a group of mainly women in the wake of the Atlanta spa shootings, where eight people were killed and one wounded, six of whom were women of Asian descent. And this was happening in the backdrop of rising anti-Asian sentiment throughout the country. I remember how I felt at that time. I felt sick, scared, hopeless, triggered. I remembered how I felt as a kid, as a student, being targeted with racial slurs, and then as a working adult experiencing microaggressions that made me feel depersonalized because of what I looked like and what people assumed I was because of my Asianness. This was also in the wake of the murder of George Floyd and countless other black and brown Americans, acts targeting the Jewish and Muslim Amer Americans, anti-immigrant sentiment, and violence against members of the LGBTQ community. I needed an organization like AAPI Montclair, and I needed it to feel a deep sense of community and connection with others who could understand, and also to regain a sense of personal empowerment. To this day, the Lantern Festival is the community event that has helped held the deepest meaning for me, both as a member of the Asian American community, as a citizen of Montclair, and a New Jersey resident. It's so inspiring for me to see the way the entire community can come together 
and most of all, to see how many organizations there are that give us all a chance to be actively involved in fighting hate in all its forms and work together towards equity and justice for all and to be part of the solution. I wanna um, thank all the community organizations that are here tonight for everything you do to, just do, to do just that. And can we give like a round of applause for all the community organizations that are here? Thank you. Uh, combating hate and the systems of injustice start with what we all as individuals can do to learn from and listen with empathy to others, to learn about how every one of us is impacted by the systems that seek to divide us. But I believe that we are stronger together when working in solidarity and by building coalitions that are multiracial, multi-faith, and intersectional. Last year at this event, I stood up here and I spoke about how hopeful I felt, seeing the many ways we have come together to support and take care of each other when members within our larger community is suffering. Everyone, regardless of background and identity, deserves to feel and be safe. And seeing how much good work is being done right here in Montclair is one of the things that inspired me to ultimately run to serve the people of this town as an elected official. I know there are so many others that have this vision for our community and who seek to unite to advance justice for all. <laughs> it's an honor a year later to stand before you as Montclair's first Asian American elected official in this community's 156 year history. I am so humbled and grateful to have this opportunity to be of service to the people of Montclair in this new role. <laughs> I want to give a shout out also to one of my running mates, Dr. Renee Baskerville. If you can believe it, she is the first black woman mayor in this town's history as well. I mean, this is if you can actually believe that. And in addition to Dr. Baskerville, I'm looking forward to working with my fellow council members and all of you to advance policies and initiatives that make us stronger and healthier as individuals and as a community in Montclair and beyond. So one of the things that I learned um, through campaigning is that I'm supposed to, I should really end with a call to action and it was drilled into my head by my team members. So um, I'm gonna end with a call to action. Um, part of making a change is to vote. And so I wanted to give a shout out to the AAPI New Jersey Get Out the Vote table. They have a table right next to the merch table. Um, if you're eligible to vote in New Jersey, please stop by. They have nonpartisan information on registration and voting in the June 4th primary elections. So please go out there and vote, get informed about the candidates. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you to all of our speakers and performers this evening. Uh, this concludes our formal program, but the event is not over. Uh, please be sure to visit the community partner table, tables and this year's history wall, which is over there to my left. Um, also be part of the community art project, Future Dreaming New Jersey, which is located by the crafts area, those tents over there. Um, and kids, the crafts area is still open for paper lanterns, coloring, origami lanterns. And then we also have a few groups who are about to start their performances throughout the park, uh, including Jazz House Kids, BART, B-A-R-D, and School of Rock. Uh, so please take a stroll and enjoy their performances. Uh, and finally, if you'd like to stick around the stage here, Shira Cruz from AAPI New Jersey will be leading a short upstander training on how to respond to harassment and practice resilience when people exercise anti-Asian American harassment. So with that, I'll let Shira take it away. Hi. Mabuhai, I'm Shira Cruz. I'm the Advocacy and Civic Engagement Associate at AAPI New Jersey. Today's Lanterns Festival for Justice and Remembrance memorializes the lives of those harmed by violence and injustice including anti-Asian hate. In the face of hate, bias, and microaggression, AAPI New Jersey, in collaboration with 
Asian Americans Advancing Justice emphasizes building resilience and long-term healing. So let's start the training. Uh, this is sort of a little preview, a little uh, slice. So let's take a quick survey and see how much you know. What percentage of Asian Americans feel like they do not fully belong or feel accepted? So I will read the percentages out loud to you and you can raise your hand on which of these percentages you think is the answer. So raise your hand if you think 23% do not fully belong. Feel like they don't fully belong. All right, 78% do not feel like they fully belong. So I see a little bit of hands, yes. Um, do you think 46% Asian Americans feel like they don't fully belong? No, not so much. Last 65%. Okay, so if you said 78% of Asian Americans do not feel like they fully belong, you are correct. Of those who do not feel like they fully belong, a lot of them rooted the cause for, for race-related discrimination. And 43% said it was because they don't see people like them in positions of power. AAPI New Jersey provides this very same training to prepare community members to respond and to begin to heal from harassment. One of the first steps is to know that harassment is never your fault. Most of us probably think, well, of course, I know that harassment is not my fault. But I want you to take a moment to really sit with it and repeat that to yourself, that harassment is never your fault. So harassment is never my fault. Can I hear everyone say that? Good enough. <laughs> harassment is never my fault, that's right. It is your responsibility to, have, to not have the perfect response. So let me repeat that. It is not your responsibility to have the perfect response to harassment. It is their responsibility to not harass you. It is very easy for us to experience instances of harassment and blame ourselves and think, how could I have reacted better? But the reality is that it's not our responsibility. You don't have to have the perfect response. It is their responsibility not to harass you. Through this training, you will be introduced to the following framework that AAAJC responds in harassment. So the first one, it kind of helps me when doing hand motions, right? The first strategy is to trust your instinct. So you trust your instinct. Second one is you want to take up space. You want to reclaim the space that you were harassed in. And then the third one is very mandatory, and it's to practice resilience. So put your hand on your heart. While I can't really expound on the first two because of time, I want you to all know that today, right now, you are practicing resilience. Community resiliency means that it is the individual and collective capacity to respond to adversity and change. We are all resilient. It is something that is natural to us. This shows us that we're all connected like an ecosystem. So resilience really starts with you. And resilience is attending this celebration. Resilience is going to the upstander training. Resilience is remembering the names of those that contributed to our AAPI history. Resilience is sharing your story and reporting it to the New Jersey Division for Civil Rights, which they have a table over here. And or share your story with us, AAPI New Jersey. Resilience is also volunteering today. And finally, resilience means being your most authentic self. Lastly, I want to introduce a resilient practice called hand breathing that you could do with me if you're sitting down and listening, especially after you experience some form of harassment, bias, or microaggression. You feel like you need a grounding moment, and I want you to all do it with me. So you take out your hand like this. Okay, I will, I will do my best. So take out your hand right here, and we're gonna curve the finger up and down your, your hand, and every up and down is an indication of you inhaling and then exhaling. So if your finger goes up, you're gonna inhale and you're gonna exhale. So we're gonna start on the corner of our thumb. So inhale, going up, and exhale, going down. Inhale, going up, your pointy finger. Exhale, going down. If you'd like to close your eyes, I see some folks doing that. Inhale your middle, with the middle finger, and exhale down. Inhale the ring finger, and exhale going down. Last one, pinky, inhale, 
and exhale. Sometimes we often act in crisis when we feel our heightened emotions. These are really good resilient practices like hand breeding. And let's all stand together against all forms of hate and celebrate community and solidarity and our shared goals of securing justice for all. So if you would like to have this upstander training uh, be organized for your community, you can uh, visit me at the uh, go out, out the vote uh, table, or you can uh, approach me as well, or you can ask and contact API New Jersey to bring this very training to your community. Thank you so much. <laughs>